Good Shabbos and happy Hanukkah. Here's an amazing Hanukkah story. Private Wanniger was in the Second World War and he was tasked with clearing out some communities, some cities, some towns and villages from any hidden Nazis. Whilst the patrol in one such town, he sees a, a shadow, a silhouette of a person running in the field outside the city. He quickly screams, stop, stop, but the person doesn't stop. He warns, stop or I'll shoot, but the person doesn't stop. He hides behind the tree. Then he sees that person bending down, digging beneath the tree. And then And as he's running, he, um, Private Wanaga says, stop, stop, and he doesn't stop. So instead of shooting, he decides he's gonna run him down. He chases him, he tackles him, and he notices it's a child. It's a 10 year old boy. And as he tackles him, there is a Kanakia that falls out of his hands. He, Captain Wanaga picks it up, and the boy, Schlops it away from him, saying, no, this is mine, this is mine. This boy obviously was afraid with anyone in uniform. After witnessing his, being forced to witness his father being shot and not knowing the whereabouts of his mother. He had come back from concentration camp and he was all alone in this world. Captain Weiniger got close to this young man whose name was David. And after a few weeks, he says, do you want to come back to New York with me? To which he says, yes, sure. And he takes him back to New York and he does all the paperwork and he adopts him. And um, he had, he was involved, very, very involved in the community and the, a curator of the um, Jewish Museum in Manhattan noticed the menorah. And he says, this is something very valuable. It's hundreds of years, European old Hanukkah. And it could be, it would be suitable to be in the museum. So he offers the boy fifty thousand dollars in those times to give him this kind of kia. But the boy refused. He says it's a heirloom in his family for hundreds of years, and he's not giving it up for any money. When Hanukkah arrives, they light the Hanukkah by the window. The young man goes upstairs then to do some studying. And Private Weiniger is still downstairs in the room with the Hanukkah, and all of a sudden he hears a knock on the door. He opens the door and a woman comes in. And the woman says, can I see that Hanukkah? I want to get up close to it because I had something very similar in my family. And I've never seen anything like it in any other, um, in any other place. So I'd like to see it. And she starts asking questions, where did you get it? She says, look, I don't know much about it. I'll call my son down there and he could um, explain. He calls David downstairs and David takes a look, comes down, looks at the woman and screams out, mama. And mother and son embrace Jew to the Hanukkah. What a beautiful story. But it's another one such story that represents indeed the power of the Hanukkah candles. You see, the Hanukkah candle, because it's a mitzvah associated with light, really represents the soul and mitzvah in general, because King Solomon says, has two verses. One says, Kiner mitzvah tarar, the mitzvah is a candle and Torah is light. And one says, Ne'er Shem the the candle of God is the soul of man. And so there's a resonance. When we light the Hanukkah, there's a resonance in our soul and awakens a Jewish soul, which can explain why the Rebbe was so adamant about lighting Hanukkah candles all over the world in all kinds of public places. It touches something in the soul of a Jew. I remember when we just arrived and we made a Hanukkah menorah, we had a plumber friend who made it out of a, a large 19 foot menorah out of pipes, out of white, PVC pipes. We put it in front of our Chabad house. And the person who sponsored it said, as, as people came up to him and said how it reminded them of their parents, reminded them of their Jewishness. This is the power of the Hanukkah. 
it reminds people of the fact that they themselves have a candle of God inside of them. And that's why the previous rabbi says you should look at the Hanukkah candles and, and learn the stories that it's telling us. Because it tells us a story about our soul. It tells us a story about our obligations and what we have to do in this world. I've given some meditations on it. How Number one, the oil is the mitzvah. The wick is the Torah. Or the oil is the mitzvah. And the wick is the soul, is our soul. And our souls can do lots of mitzvahs, consuming lots of oil, as the wick does. But it needs the mitzvah to retain the light upon it. But the, the, the mitzvah needs a Jewish soul to do it, to be valuable. So there is this combination of soul, mitzvah, and that's what the Hanukkah menorah represents in on a mystical level. It is it's the, 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 the candle of God is the soul of man. It is the candle of a mitzvah, the Torah's light. So it's such a powerful representation of everything we are as Jews. Maybe it's that's why Hanukkah candles is the second most commemorated Jewish tradition in Israel after the Pesach Seder. Pesach Seder, I believe, is celebrated by 84% of the Israeli community, Jewish community, and the Hanukkah candles are lit by 78%. Um, because it is really what talks to us as being Jewish. So like Yichanakia, we have another three nights. Tonight, you have to light it early because it's Shabbos. You have to light it at, um, at 6.40 and make sure when you light it tonight that you don't light the little colorful candles. Either have oil or use tea lights. You don't even need a Hanukkah. Just set up six candles and tea lights that will last till nine o'clock and light them all and make the brach on them at six, after 6.40. And... Um, and then another three nights, and then come to the public uh, menorah lighting. We're lighting one on Sunday, the last night of Hanukkah, in Manly, in front of the town hall. Um, so if you're there or you want to come there, you know, it's not a work day, neither Sunday nor Monday, so come and be present at another Hanukkah candle lighting.